<laughs> the day, the day is finally here. So I guess if you don't know what's going on, this is the Prusa Mark 3S and I purchased this on 610 2020 and it just showed up today, which puts the lead time from when I ordered it to when I received it today at seven weeks on the nose, which is quite a long time if you're waiting for something you literally want next day, but they're pretty upfront with how long your lead times are given the world it's current situation. And I have checked their site today and lead times look like they have been moving back towards four or five weeks. But since I ordered this, I have received the FL Sun Q5, which has easily become my go-to printer. Let's be honest, I don't really even use the TiVo anymore. Uh, the FL Sun Q5 is just, it prints better, prints faster, it's more reliable. It's just an all around better experience than the TiVo, uh, if I'm gonna be honest. I guess I, I use the TiVo if I have uh, a project that I need to print more more than one thing at one time and the differences between the prints don't really matter but if I'm printing like a, a fan for the uh, fan showdown or something that I want a better quality print it's it's the Q5 all day long and I know there's a, a lot of bad juju about getting a Delta for your first printer or just Deltas in general and I will say I've had none of those experiences this thing literally came out of the box in 45 minutes from box to printing it took me 45 minutes and it just works and it works good and that the prints stick and the extruder doesn't slip and it's just a good experience and it looks cool because it's a Delta. So after having that experience with a $275 printer, um, the Mark 3S, am I going to be disappointed? Because this thing's 750, this is the kit. The kit's around 750. If you want it fully put together and delivered to your door, you're, lock, you're looking at more than $1,000. But to be honest, before I even got into 3D printing. I knew about the Prusa, the Mark 3S. It's like the gold standard for FDM home printers. So I, I wanted to have one in my, in, you know, on the channel for, for quality prints that we know are gonna be good from a trusted brand with open source, um, you know, an open source platform. Everything Prusa does is just good. I use their slicer, I guess, and I have no issues with that. But, you know, is that 750 gonna be justifiable? I don't know. I imagine it is. I've heard nothing but good things about Prusa. But, from getting this thing out of the box to printing, I assume is not gonna be 45 minutes like this thing. So I guess the best thing to do now is to tear this open and start building and find out how long it takes me to get it out of the box and build up and making a print. And then we'll compare it to the FL Sun because this thing is quite a bit cheaper and the quality is still good in my opinion and its it speed is just awesome. But maybe I just don't have a good comparison of what a good printer is. So let's get her put together. So first thing, definitely not as easy to put together as the Q5. This was like 45 minutes, if that, to uh, take it out of the box, put it together, start printing. And that's essentially because it's, it's, it's called a kit, but it's essentially like an assembly that you bolt together. There's hardly any pieces per se, which I really like. But this thing is like all pieces. There's, there's hardly anything that's already assembled. I can't even think of anything that I, now that I'm thinking about it that's already pre-assembled. It's literally a box of parts and you're off to the races. But I don't want to, don't think that it's actually hard to do. If you're considering getting the kit and you're like, ooh, too many pieces, it's pretty easy to put together. I mean, Prusa does a great job of giving you this book that has all the pictures and arrows and instructions and even things not to do or to watch out for that, I mean, the whole process to put it together was 
it was essentially pretty simple, but it just takes, uh, it takes some time. So knowing that, would I, if I was to buy another one of these, would I get the kit version or would I get a pre-assembled version? And I don't know. I, I like the kits because knowing how everything goes together and interfaces and how it works makes uh, troubleshooting it when you have issues, which it did, easier because you know how to take things apart and how they go back together. But now that I've already made one, I don't know, might be worth it. It really depends on how much your time's worth to you. But either way, uh, the, the benefit of the kit is that you get it for a cheaper price. The instructions are very good. So putting it together is quite easy. You get it already assembled. You know that it's gonna come already tested, working out of the box, and you're just out a couple, couple hundred bucks. So either way, you're gonna be set. First thing I did though, after it was all put together was do a little test print. Now I already used the Prusa slicer on all my other stuff anyway. So I literally just had to select the uh, Mark 3S from the drop down menu and then it was good because it already has, it gives you pretty much, it's already set up. It's got everything configured. And I wanted to just try out of the box configurations. And the first thing I tested was of course, a calibration cube and it came out pretty much flawlessly. I don't see any ghosting hardly any surface surface imperfections to speak of. I mean, it just did a good job for being completely, completely new, fresh out of the box, just done with this calibration. Pretty impressed. And then I, I also printed the same cube on the Q5 and I took the same speed settings and everything on the Q5 to try to make everything as apples to apples as possible. I even use the same Prusament, same temperatures, everything like that. And the cube came out pretty good uh, dimensionally just as good as the uh, the Prusa cube. But when you look at the surface of the cube, it's definitely not as pretty. You can see some slight ghosting. There's some weird lines in some of the layers that might be under extrusion. It's hard to tell, but it, definitely when you look at the top, you can see that the top, there might be some under extrusion error issues on the Q5 that need tweaked out, which is possible since uh, I just ran the same the same extruder settings for each and they're not the same extruders or the same even setup. One's a Bowden, one's a direct drive. But regardless of that, it actually didn't do quite a bad job. After that, it was everybody's favorite, the old Benchy. And again, this is the second print that the, the, the Prusa Mark 3S did out of the box, slicing with whatever settings come from Prusa themselves. And this thing is like literally perfect. If I do say so myself, I mean, from all the Benchies I've done, I guess I haven't done too many in my life, but I think this is about as good as you can get. Then I printed that same Benchy on the Q5, and although it printed and it doesn't look too bad, you can definitely see that there's some issues. The biggest one being right here on the front or the, the bow, I believe, of the ship, you got some cooling problems. And that is the biggest issue with this machine is that the cooling fan or the cooling duct duct is uh, hot garbage. And even the one I printed, so this is a 3D printed one that I made to try to get better airflow. It just doesn't do a great job cooling the filament, especially when I was printing it a little hotter than I normally do because I wanted to match what Prusa was recommended from their software. You can definitely see that we got some, we got some cooling problems. I mean, I could probably fix this by doing a better, a better shroud design, but the Prusa, I mean, one, the cooling fan for the parts, or the filament is bigger, and the uh, the duct that's designed for it is a lot better. So in and of itself, the Prusa is just gonna print better every time until I get that figured out myself, which is just a step that you gotta take when you buy a cheaper piece of equipment. You just, you know, everything's, not everything's gonna be as dialed in as something that it's gonna cost a little bit more money, but had some more R&D put into a design and build. Next up, actually I printed this one first on the Q5, was this little octopus and this is one of those prints where no support or anything's needed and it, all the links just print in one and you pop it off and they all just work. And the, the, the Q5 did a really good job. Everything stuck well when it was done. After I let the build plate cool down, everything popped up pretty easily, no damage done. And the detail is pretty good. Everything looks pretty, pretty decent. Then I wanted to try it on the Prusa because I got this new, so this is the new style build plate that's shipping now. It's the textured, uh, flexible build plate and I wanted to print on it hopefully with no additives no adhesion or n nothing to aid in adhesion and I will say that this little octopus drove me insane because I could not get this thing to stick at all on this build plate it would either not stick at all to begin with and I'd get the blob of death on the extruder or it would seem like it was going to stick it would start printing I would walk away for five seconds and I would come back and spaghetti explosion was going on 
and that was pretty frustrating. I, I probably spent a good a good day or so trying to get this to print without using anything on the build plate, try and recalibrate the machine, try and uh, tune my Z offset, making sure I had a good first layer, a thicker first layer, a hotter first layer, a hotter build plate. I tried everything under the sun, couldn't get this guy to stick to this build plate until I used the glue stick that Prusa sends with the machine. Probably that's the reason for it is that because this octopus has such a little surface, the, 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 the actual part of the octopus that's touching the build plate, it's such a tiny little surface area that it just doesn't get a good adhesion to the deck or to the plate until you apply a little glue. Put a little glue on there, print it out, no problem. And when compared to the one that came off the Q5, I mean, they're both good, but uh, let's be honest, the one from the Prusa is better. There's less surface imperfections, less zits or whatever those little bumps are called. Um, everything worked on both. All the ligaments worked, all the links worked, but the Prusa just printed a better version of it. And I don't think I'm shocking anybody out there by like, oh, look, the Prusa Mark III S, it does good prints. I think we all knew that. We all knew that it prints well, but it's always fun to compare. So print wise, yes, this machine does print better than one that costs 275. Is that a shocker? I doubt it, but it does a good job and I like it quite a bit. And it's going to make printing things on the channel just that much better. And this thing is just going to be good because when I need something printed that it doesn't matter how beautiful it looks. I know that it at least prints, uh, it at least prints within specifications like measurements still, still measure out. They might not look as good, but dimensionally it's on board. Then I want to test out some of the little things that come with the Prusa. One of them being the filament sensor. Urgh. So when I was putting it together, the big thing that I noticed, especially like in the head or in the hot end of this thing is the time and effort and design time and trial and error time. All the things that Prusa has done to, to optimize this machine to run with these parts is pretty impressive. Everything is designed to the T. Like it's just so, as somebody that does design work a lot, it's just so beautiful how perfect everything looks, how everything's designed to be as small as possible, but function in a way that is useful. It's just, it's just great. But at the, at the same time, I think they overdid it on some stuff. They over engineered some things like the filament sensor. And this is funny because when I first seen it, when I was putting it together, I was like, this is awesome. But then after I started using it, I was like, this is not so awesome. And what I mean is it's so intricate. You got a, you got a little arm in there that's tinged with the bolt that has two magnets on either side, one in the arm and one on the back wall that repel each other to reset it. And it pushes up against a ball bearing that touches the filament. And the ball bearing is supposed to always want to slide forward, which is pushed by the arm and the magnet. So when the filament is pulled out, the ball bearing slides forward. The little arm is no longer in between the IR sensor and it says, hey, no filament, turn off. And in theory, that works great but I didn't have such a great experience with it because the first thing I wanted to do is obviously start a print, cut the filament and see if it kicked off. And after the filament disappeared into the hot end, I was like, something doesn't seem right. And after a little tap on the, the motor, everything shut off. So then of course I do what everybody does. I tore it apart to see if I installed something incorrectly, which I didn't. I did tighten everything up and make sure everything functioned the way it's supposed to, put it all together. And it, it worked and it doesn't. And then after that, I went to the, the old Google verse or back to the internet and seen that a lot of people have this problem where essentially the arm either doesn't fully come out of the, the C channel that the IR sensor's in because eventually you got, you essentially you got, a, you got a C and there's an IR beam going between it and when something blocks it, that's how the sensor's tripped. The problem I have is that there's a little flag on the arm and the arm doesn't always, the flag doesn't always come out of the C so it doesn't always trip. And uh, I do. I did see some instructions from Prusa or somebody out there giving instructions on what to trim and whatnot to make things work better. Essentially what I did is I took everything apart and I tried to find any little dangly bits from the 3D printed parts that were interfering with anything and try to clean everything up to make it work better. And it does, but the problem is I just don't trust it. And that's the whole purpose of the filament sensor is to trust that when your filament runs out, your printer is gonna shut off and I'm not there. Maybe after after it, it works a couple times, but for the time being, I'm just going to have to make sure that if I'm running low on filament, I stand by to uh, do a change out because I'm pretty sure that if it does run the filament out, it's at least going to run for a while. What I did like though, is how easy it is to change filament. So this is a little, one of these, uh, essentially the same, same thing as this little octopus, but it's a shark. 
and I wanted to print it out and test how it is for changing filaments because the best thing about a direct drive, at least in my opinion, you can do it on a Bowden, but the filament is so close to the hot end that you can change it out relatively quickly and the Prusa is so well optimized that there's functions within the software, be it it's a little 8-bit screen, that's kind of a bummer, but you can just select change filament, machine comes over, ejects the filament you got in there, you add new stuff, and it just purges itself and goes right back to where it was printed. And it does such a good job of it. So you can see this little shark here has got a white line all the way down the middle of it. And essentially all I did was get to a, a point where I was like, well, I want the white line to start here. Ask the machine to switch filament. It jogs over, ejects what's on there. You put the new filament in there and you just tell it to go off and start again. And it just does it very well. And the print quality on this little shark is just so good compared to what I'm used to. I'm, obviously I haven't seen all the printers in the world, but it did a great job in the little shark. The little jaw works good. All the little hinges and links work great. The fins all work just good. So then I wanted to obviously make a Benchy that changed filament a whole bunch of times. So this is a red, white, and blue America Benchy. <laughs> it came out perfect. And although these are different filament brands, so the, the white and red are both Hatchbox. Uh, the blue one is this MCPP from Mitsubishi Chemical. They're all different. They all have slightly different uh, temperatures they all printed very well, even though they probably weren't in their optimal printing temperature zone. And that just really impressed me. That's probably my favorite benching in the whole wide world. I think that brings us back to my original query. Did I waste $750? Uh, and the idea behind that was that I had purchased this before I ever owned anything like the FL Sun Q5. So I was basing my ideas of what a printer was based on the TiVo Transfer Pro, which is like $200 I paid for it. And it came like this one did, tons of pieces I had to put all together, minus this awesome assembly book. I didn't get one of those, uh, but I had to put it together. And then after it was together, it didn't really work that good. I had issues with the build plate adhesion. I had issues with the extruder being hot garbage and it just wasn't a good experience. I learned a lot because I had to fix all those things or figure out why it was happening. But if I would have bought something like the FL Sun Q5 right out of the gate, I think I would have had a much different mindset on how, how 3d printing was, uh, but both of these machines are good. They're obviously not in the same price point. They don't need to be because this is aimed at somebody that's just getting into it or wants to try it out or just maybe wants a Delta printer. It's aimed at somebody that doesn't want to spend a lot of money, but they want to have good prints. And this does a good job. It doesn't do as good a job as the Prusa, but it's close. Dimensionally, it's in there. And you're going to have a good time if you get the Q5. But for the, but for the money, I mean, you're... The money is well spent in the Prusa because everything is designed to a T. For me personally, I love having actual guide rods and linear bearings and dual ball screws and a hard steel backbone over, you know, stuff like track rollers on some extrusion. It, for me, it's just better. Now, in an industrial setting, that's going to last a much longer time than these are. But for a home printer, probably not much of a difference. But for me personally, I do enjoy it. And I really just appreciate all the effort and time spent designing and changing and tweaking the Mark III S and I'm sure that there ever comes a Mark IV. I actually hope Prusa makes a Delta because that'd be sweet. But when the Mark IV comes out, everything that they've learned through this whole process will just get you know, repeated and it just becomes a better and better piece of equipment. And not to mention, it just prints so good for a machine that only costs $750, which isn't cheap, but just for some context, I at work, the printer that we use for prototyping, we print an ABS, but uh, that machine is $25,000. And the prints that come off of it don't actually look too much different than the ones that come off of this one, which is impressive. Now I think it's time to start printing some fans for the fan showdown with the Prusa. Till next time.